Hello there, welcome to this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Michelle and I am a handcraft fiber artist in Michigan. I make odd and soft creations out of yarn and felt and I juggle my time between running my art shop part-time and working full-time. My day job is in tech as a UX and UI designer. So yeah, I'm always trying to find some balance between these two gigs for my mental health. But yeah, that's life. Anyway, this vlog is about one of my most proudest accomplishments with Sew so What Studio. I have several tufted bags, rug bags, punch needle bags, or whatever you want to call it. I have five designs in rotation, and I opened up a whopping number of 20 pre-order slots um, or made-to-orders for them at the end of March. Maybe it doesn't sound like a lot to some people, but wow for me this was quite an undertaking like from tufting to securing the backing fabric to sketching out patterns sewing and cleaning up the details and overall perfecting everything I guess i'm quite fussy and fiddly when it comes to the quality of the things i make for people which you know is fine i ultimately had so much fun with this endeavor but like I said, it was quite a few orders to manage, so I needed a lot of real estate to work with. Um, I acquired a huge tufting frame for my studio, but in order to make room for that frame, I had to rearrange some furniture in my room, but it all worked out in the end. Yeah, so if you want to, and if you can, please watch to the end of the video. I think it helps me out, maybe it helps like the algorithm, but you know, mostly because I just want you to see it all. I have a lot of good footage from different uh, stages of this process, and hopefully I can keep you company for the next 25 minutes or so. I'll check in with you at various checkpoints of this video, so don't miss me too much. Just kidding. Okay, talk soon. <laughs> Bye! Okay, so this is the state of my studio currently. My main working table where I do all my stitching, planning and content creating at this table. And then I have a little one here where I do some of my admin stuff, shipping and more planning. And along this wall, I have my yarn and thread and felt in this mess of a box here. And then my reading chair off in this corner here. So that is currently the setup of my studio right now. I didn't really put much thought into this layout. Now that we're going to be building my tufting frame, I figured it's a good time to kind of rearrange things so that it fits better in this room. I'm not quite happy with certain elements. Like, so the table in the middle of the room disrupts the flow of the room, if that makes sense. Like it kind of cuts it in half. I don't know, I just feel like it's bad feng shui. So I'm thinking of taking this main table that you guys are standing on right now and moving it like an L shape here so pushing this cube back <laughs> moving some of my okay it'll make more sense when I'm done with the setup and the reason why I'm putting my chair here sitting on this side looking out is because I just like can't sit in any room with my back to the door I don't know why, I just get very paranoid and I just like to be able to see the ongoings of the entranceway and exit way. You know what I mean? Like if I'm sitting right here and my table is in front of me, first of all, the natural light from the window will be wonderful. Then I will be able to just view the doorway always. Does anybody else feel like this? <laughs> Packs are all done. Some rods. Some rods. Am I doing it? Oh, look. 
Look at all this grease on my hands. It's from this. Well, it's secure. Hooray! Okay, so it's done. I'm excited, but I feel a little bit daunted. Daunting? It's daunting. It's basically a humongous canvas. I just got an exciting item in the mail. Now that I'm gonna be standing and working by the frame a lot, I don't wanna have to deal with finding my scissors every time. So, oh, this is heavy though. It's gonna get tiresome. I got some scissors that like you wear it like a necklace. Ooh. How does this? These are sharp. I should be careful with these. I mean, like, what did I expect? Of course they're gonna be sharp. This feels very, I don't know how to describe it. Like, okay, in one way, I feel like a tailor, hey. like an able sister. And then in some other way, I feel like, um, I don't know how to describe it. What is, what is this feeling giving me? Like a knight? Not a knight. Nope. What does this remind me of? I don't know. I don't know what. Bruh. This. F like cowboy? Nope. Um, um chow. Anyway, anyway, so. Kind of excited. I had to rethink it because initially what I did was I drew the front and the back side of the patterns thinking that I will punch needle just all of the designs on this frame but I realized it works much faster if I use my tufting gun just on the back side of the bags where there's a lot more surface area and wherever there are details for like the face and stuff I prefer to use my punch needle because I can't quite maneuver very well around different directions and curves with a tufting gun so my approach has changed a little bit so what i did with the front of some pieces is just work on my big embroidery hoop as normal it turns out most of these guys on this frame will end up being the back side of the bags i am just trying to make the most of the real estate on this frame as much as possible Man, like it's been a learning curve doing this many commissions, oh, not commissions, um, pre-orders at once. So happy that these bags are so popular that like a lot of people can partake in the joy of owning one. But precision and like a lot of planning ahead is involved. So I'm counting. Like, strawberry back one, strawberry back two, strawberry back three. And a strawberry back four will go here because I need to be able to fit a cherry. My goodness, on the back. I had a customer reach out to me and also request like some booties on their cherry bag. I know this will be like tufted over and then stitched later, but just to envision it. That's so cute. That's gonna be really cute. They get the vision, you know?
12.29. You <laughs> should probably go to bed now. Okay, so it's been a few days since I took that last tufting footage. I didn't vlog like the whole rest of it because I got kind of overwhelmed and I really just wanted to buckle down the next couple of days. I am happy to say that the hand tufting portion is at least done for now. Hooray! Okay, my wrist was going numb. So I had to like take lots of stretch breaks. When my wrist was going numb, I just like switched back to the tufting gun. Um, and when then my thumb was getting sore, I switched back to the punch needle. It was just like taxing physiologically, but mentally I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's been super soothing. I just put on my headphones and zone out. It's a very repetitive um, mechanical process. So I don't know, it's just been really good for my brain. The next stage of this production line, I guess you can say, I want to put some adhesive paste on the back of each piece so that they're extra secure. After that, getting the tufting fabric off of the frame and cutting out the actual individual pieces. Start gluing in the raw edges and fastening the backing fabric or the inside lining of the bags. And I'm feeling ambitious, so I really want to move on to the stitchy stages <laughs> where I can finally start sewing on the magnetic clasp, the D-ring, like the buckles on the sides of the bags, stitching around the edges of the pieces, and putting the back side and the front sides of the bags together. I know that's a lot. Just gonna do what I can, and hopefully I get to that stage by the end of this week. Thank you for sticking by me so far. Here we go. They look like they've been ectoplasmed. Ectoplasmed? Okay. I think they're ready to come off. Hooray! Ugh. My babies. Bruh. There's more. But I'm so tired. This is a lot of work. But man, I'm really proud of myself. I'm gonna keep going. Yes! So today, we are starting to see the light at the end of the proverbial tunnel. What does that mean? That means we're reaching the final stages of this process. As you can see, they're now cut out into individual pieces. I let the glue cure for about 24 to 48 hours, which means that they're tacky but not so sticky that it's super annoying to work with and sew through the back of it. So I spent the next several few moments just sewing a shit ton of butt cracks and freckles and seeds for strawberries and eyelashes for the cherries, etc. Um, yeah, I think these are the details that really bring the characters to life, in my opinion. I set up my spot in the living room just for a change of scenery. Psychotherapist for the city. No idea. Why? Citizens will call 
Finishing the cherry bags always takes a little bit longer than the rest of the bags um, because I hand sew the stem and the leaf to go at the top of the cherry um, and I always underestimate how much time it'll take me to sew all these guys. What I do is I take like a stiffer piece of felt like this grey one here and I sandwich it between two of the brown more floppier felt pieces and blanket stitch all the way around. Then I stitch together two stiffer pieces of green felt for the leaf. And then I sew that onto the stems. And then the stems get sewn onto the bags themselves. It doesn't sound like a lot, but I always underestimate how much time it'll take me to put the finishing touches on these bags. And you know, all the more with these uh, extra details here. But you know what? It's worth it because it kind of just like brings the whole look together. Oh my goodness, look at this tower, it's so heavy. This doesn't look like a lot when it's just in one pile. 20 hand tufted bags. I did it! I'm so happy. 360. Okay, so. The next step is attaching the bag straps and then we're going to get to packing today. Wowie mummy! We can do this! Oh hi! Just admiring my cherry bag. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have these piles separated and I have my thank you cards separated also by bag. Okay, strawberry, cherries, lemons, acorn, and pumpkin. Okay, here we go. <laughs> We're off to a good start. As we near the end of this vlog, I want to thank you who stayed this far. Um, like I said earlier, hand tufting these bags was one of the most ambitious endeavors I have taken on for my shop. And these last few weeks have been one of my busiest weeks, but I'm really proud of myself that I made it through. There were a few moments throughout where I got a little upset 
at myself for not being able to work faster, but I just needed to be nicer to myself. Like I work full time, you know, from nine to five. So I get my crafting time in whenever I can outside of that. So of course it'll take me more time to make anything versus someone who makes art full time. Also, I'm not a machine, lol. <laughs> so, and I know my customers know this, so it was just me bullying myself. And if you're one of my customers watching, thank you so much for your patience. Anyway, thank you for sticking around. I have so many more video ideas for the future. Um, I want to take YouTube a bit more seriously because as much work the editing process is, I really do enjoy this long form content. I can just share so much more with you guys. So please leave a like, comment or subscribe if you'd like to continue seeing the ongoings of Sewer so Studio or just to witness what silly little crafty idea I have next. So yeah, take care, okay? We'll talk soon. Goodbye!